In the first scene, a young boy scout is standing in Bangkok at a busy intersection. In the middle of all the traffic, he sees an old woman struggling to get across the street with her bags. When the boy sees that she is having trouble, he runs over to help her cross the road safely. But in all the chaos, he drops his phone on the street and leaves it there while he helps the woman get to safety. As he turns to get his phone, the traffic lights change, and a fast-moving bus hits him, killing him. In the next scene, we meet the main character, Fuchit Puangnathong, whose life is full of problems. He works as a salesman at Yamaha Company, where both his boss and his co-workers make fun of him all the time. Also, it seems like his girlfriend broke up with him so she could become a pop star, which broke his heart. Even though Fuchit works hard to pay his bills, he is having trouble making ends meet. He lives alone in a small flat and can't seem to get out from under his growing debts. His life's constant stresses are getting to him, and he's getting more and more desperate to find a way out of his situation. Fuchit goes to a school on a certain day to try to sell his product to a possible customer. But he is upset to find out that one of his co-workers has already made the sale there. The next day, Fuchit leaves his house to go to work, but he is shocked to find that his creditor has taken away his car because he hasn't paid back his debts. Fuchit's day at work gets worse when his boss calls him into his office and tells him to quit because he isn't making enough sales. When he gets back to his desk, he is even more upset to find a stack of bills from credit companies that are past due. This adds to his already growing financial problems. Fuchit goes to the stairs to think and have a cigarette when he's feeling down, but he's even more upset when he finds out he's out of cigarettes. Even worse, his mother calls and asks him to send money to pay for his younger sister's schooling. Even though he is in a tight spot financially, Fuchit agrees to send the money. The phone rings again, and when he picks it up, he hears a stranger tell him he has a chance to win 10,000 baht. At first, Fuchit thinks it's a joke call from his co-workers or friends, but the caller tells him personal information like his full name, age, and whether or not he has a job, which makes him wonder. The caller then tells Fuchit that he just needs to swat a fly that is buzzing around him right now. If he does the job, he will get a prize of 10,000 baht in cash. Fuchit isn't sure, but after the anonymous caller talks him into it, he decides to give it a try. He rolls up a newspaper and hits the fly with it easily. The next second, he gets a message that, to his surprise, says 10,000 baht have been sent to his bank account. The caller tells Fuchit that if he eats the dead fly, he can win 50,000 baht. Fuchit is so excited that he can barely breathe. Fuchit goes back to his desk with the dead fly in his hand, unsure and hesitant. He thinks about whether or not he should do it, but after he thinks about it for a while, he puts it in his mouth. Tong, one of his co-workers, sees this and is so confused that she doesn't say anything. After a while, Fuchit gets another phone call. This time, the person on the other end tells him that he has the chance to win 100 million baht if he finishes 11 more tasks. Fuchit is worried about the unknown caller and the questionable nature of the game, but he needs money so badly that he agrees to the rules. The caller tells him that he'll have to give up all his winnings right away if he quits or if anyone finds out he's playing the game. Fuchit's third task is to go to a kindergarten and make at least three kids cry. Even though he was hesitant at first, he remembers how traumatic it was when his father crushed his toys when he was a child, so he steals toys from the kids and makes them cry. The fourth task is to steal money from a beggar, which Fuchit feels is wrong and doesn't want to do. With the fifth task, things take a bad turn. Fuchit is told to go to a fancy Chinese restaurant where he will be given a plate of feces and told to eat it. Even though he is disgusted and argues, the caller tells him he has to do the task or he will lose his prize. Flashbacks of being forced to eat dog poop as a child by bullies make him feel even worse, but in the end, Fuchit makes himself finish the food. Tong still catches him in the act this time. She starts to think that he's lost his mind. As the sick game goes on, the challenges get more degrading, illegal, and dangerous. Before he starts his sixth task, Fuchit is told to give his phone to a crazy person at a bus stop. Through him, Fuchit finds out that his next challenge will be to fight a group of young thugs on a public bus while it is moving in order to get another cell phone. Fuchit tries to talk to the criminals about getting the phone at first, but when they start to be mean to him, he gets into a fight with them. Fuchit and one of the hooligans get hurt when they fall out of the bus during the fight. But they are still fighting because the teenager pulls out a knife and moves towards him. Just as the attacker was about to attack, Fuchit grabbed a big piece of meat and hit him in the head with it. This finished his sixth task. The next obstacle is even scarier. Fuchit is told to break into a house and get the body of a person who has already died. It's a problem because it's at the bottom of a well. Not only that, but Fuchit also has to tell the family members of the dead person. The whole job only takes 10 minutes. It's a big and scary challenge, but Fuchit can't turn back now that he's come this far. As he gets closer to the bottom of the well, he sees a group of cockroaches on his arm. This scares him and makes him fall into the water. After he calmed down for a while, Fuchit tied the dead body to himself and started to climb out of the well. 
even though he only has a short amount of time, he manages to get out and call his family right before the deadline. Shortly after that, Fudget is given another task that involves hitting the new boyfriend of his ex-girlfriend. Surprisingly, Fudget is quick to agree to this one. Without hesitation, he grabs a nearby chair and beats the man so hard that he passes out. But Fudget soon feels bad about being so violent, so he takes the injured man to the hospital right away. As Fudget continues to do more and more difficult and questionable tasks, the police start to notice that he is acting in a criminal way. A group of cops, led by Officer Surachai, start to look for Fudget because they think his crime spree is part of a bigger, more dangerous plan. In the meantime, Fudget's strange behavior is making Tong more and more worried. She hacks into a website called 13 by putting together clues she heard at a police station and using her computer skills. There, she finally finds Fudget's horror show being broadcast live. His every move and every place he goes are being tracked. Tong, on the other hand, has no idea that she is also being watched closely and that she has become a part of the game she is looking into. Fudget, who is now a wanted criminal, ends up in the hospital in the next scene. He sees there that the police are looking for him. His phone rings, and the same unknown caller tells him to stay away from the police because if they catch him, the game is over and the prize money is lost. Even though it could be dangerous, Fudget keeps going with his eighth task, which is to help a patient escape from room 803 of the hospital. Fudget goes to the right room while hiding from the police. Surprisingly, the patient he is supposed to help is the same old woman from the first scene. Fudget dresses up as a ward boy and puts the old woman in a wheelchair. He then sneaks out of the hospital just before Surachai and his team arrive. In the meantime, a police official with more power tells Surachai to stop looking for the wanted criminal. Fudget takes the old woman to her small hut on the side of the main road after they leave the hospital. He then ties a silicone wire around her clothes to help her dry them. But he didn't know that the other end of the wire was fixed across the main road and couldn't be seen in the dark. Soon after, a group of teenagers on motorbikes speed by without noticing the wire. This causes a terrible accident in which one of the riders dies. Fudget is devastated by this tragedy, and he lashes out at the mysterious phone caller who has been telling him how to do these horrible things. Tong comes to the scene of the accident just as the man is realizing how bad the consequences of his actions are. He is shocked by what he sees. She begs Fudget to turn himself into the police and tells him that the police will understand why he did what he did. Tong also says that she knows about the game he has been playing. As they talk, Fudget's phone rings, and the person on the other end tells him that the game is over because someone else has found it. But he gives Fudget one last chance and gives him a new job. Kill Tong's dog. It turns out that the little puppy has already been stolen and brought to the house of the old woman. Tong is shocked when she sees him. She begs Fudget not to hurt her dog, but Fudget is so caught up in the game that he pulls out a sharp weapon and kills the innocent dog. Then, Fudget tells Tong to stay away from him and speeds off in his car. After what happened, Tong, who is determined to find out who was behind it all, goes to the police station to tell them what she thinks happened. But she has no real proof to back up her claims because the website she hacked before is now completely empty. She feels hopeless and lost as she walks away from the station. As she leaves, she runs into a group of villagers who are fighting with each other. Tong goes up to them to find out what's going on and is shocked to hear that someone cut their cow with a samurai sword. When she realizes that it's Fudget, she gets shivers down her spine. Tong follows the blood trail he left behind and comes to a strange room with the number 13 on it. But just as she is about to go in, a man comes up behind her and grabs her. Then, Tong is brought to where the reality game is being run. As she walks into the building, she meets Kai, a young boy who is in charge of the game. He turns out to be the same boy scout from the beginning of the movie. He should have died, but somehow the old woman kept him alive. Tong tries to talk some sense into him and tells him to stop playing the game because it has already killed many innocent people. But Kai says that he can't do that because he's just a part of it, and the underground reality game has maybe thousands of players and people who watch it. When Fudget gets to the end of the game, he is surprised to find out that the whole thing was a social experiment and that his actions were being watched and recorded the whole time. Then he has to stab his own abusive father, John Adams, who is strapped to a wheelchair and seems to be unconscious. This last task has a prize of 100 million baht, and Fudget is torn between wanting to win the prize and wanting to do the right thing. He starts to remember good things his dad did for him, like scaring away bullies and getting him new toys. Fudget gives up the game in the end because he remembers his mother's wish that he never turn out bad like his father. But right before he leaves, Adams wakes up and kills his son with a knife. This is how Kai in the control room finds out that Adams has won 100 million baht. He was also playing his own game, the last step of which was to kill his son. Adams didn't hesitate to do the job, but Fudget did. Tong is heartbroken when she sees how cruel things have gotten, and she yells at Kai. However, the young mastermind doesn't seem to care. He instead says that there are thousands of people playing the game right now, 
just like Fudget and Adams. Also, millions of people around the world watch the games and bet on them, which is where all the money comes from. After he says this, he calls his security and has them take Tong away. In the last scene, she wakes up on a bus bench, confused and unsure of where she is. Sir Chai finds Tong. He is still looking into the deaths that have been linked to the game. 